Hello everyone, welcome to Ask Giri the Physio Show. Today we are going to talk about Golf Operating System, I call it GOS. As I promised, we are going to talk about some biomechanics and some tips to improve your golf game. Today we are here at the Royal Mayfair Golf Club in Edmonton. I am very thankful uh, for them to let me shoot here today on a beautiful cloudy overcast morning. Uh, we are here at the driving range and we are going to get started with the show. Hopefully you can get some exciting tips to improve your golf performance today. Hey guys, I want you guys to meet Doug. Doug is my patient and he kind of also the Mayfair member. He gratefully allowed me to shoot here today and being my model also today. Thank you so much Doug for helping me today. You're welcome. Okay, first of all we are going to talk about this golf operating system I talked about. There are three factors uh, in your base of support or stance and a backswing and the downswing we are going to talk about. First we are going to talk about the X factor. So Doug, um, show me your backswing. Beautiful. Okay, can you stay there? I can I freeze you there for a minute? Okay. Okay, here, what is the X factor? X factor is nothing but the separation angle between your pelvis and your shoulder girdle, right? That angle of separation is called the X factor. Okay, you can go ahead and hit the shot, Doug. Nice, that's a beautiful straight shot. So, the greater that angle, the separation angle between your pelvis and the shoulder girdle is, the farther the ball is going to go. So, that's all winding up that trunk muscles. What you're doing when you're going up there, when the duck kind of goes in the back swing, you kind of eccentrically lengthen, right, that muscles in the trunk and then shorten them quickly. So, that's kind of a sling you're using, using your muscles. So, that is called the X factor. So, duck separation angle was decent. Right? If you compare his swing to a professional Tiger Woods or something, you will see maybe another 10, 20 degrees of more separation uh, compared to Doug's separation between his pelvis and his shoulder. So I'm going to ask Doug to take one more swing. I want you guys to observe the angle between his pelvic girdle and his shoulder girdle. Doug, can you take one more swing? Nice, wonderful shot. So just stay there Doug, stay there, right there you can watch it, where is his pelvis and where is his trunk, how much of dissociation happening between the pelvis and the shoulder and how this trunk muscles have kind of went through that uh, stretch shortened cycle, that's what we are talking about, thank you Doug. So that is the X factor and that separation angle is very important for you to get more distance on your ball and we'll talk later about how to train to improve that X factor and we'll go from there. Second one we're going to talk about today is your setup. How you are setting up your stance. Doug, can you show me your setup? And stay right there. The whole biomechanical principle or the physics behind the setup is two small, small things. Number one, your base of support. How wide or narrow your base of support is. And then every human being center of gravity is in front of your tailbone. Right? How lower the center of gravity is to your ground. The more proper you are in your stance and the more lower the center of gravity to the ground and is more stable you are going to be. So Doug has an awesome uh, shoulder width apart feet, not too wide, not too narrow. That's going to give him good stability and he bent both his knees to bring his center of gravity lower to the ground. These are the two factors you have to kind of address when it comes to the stability and your stance and that's one of the main factor uh, for your good goal swing. Okay Doug, you can take a shot from there. <coughs> So nice setup, good base, good lowering the center of gravity, knees bent nicely and there you go. So that's your second factor in your golf operating system, right? The third one we're going to talk about, first we talked about the upswing, then we talked about the base of support and, and the third one we're talking about in downswing, what's happening to your body, okay? Let's, uh, let's analyze with Doug here. Doug, so <clears throat> yeah, you can just play your shot. Nice, that's a beautiful straight shot. So in downswing, can you show your downswing a bit slower, like a slow motion downswing? <clears throat> yeah, and stay right there, stay right there. Okay, 
So this is what we are talking in downswing. It's called a crunch factor. What is a crunch factor? Right now you see he laterally flexed his trunk. The lateral flexion of your trunk along with that angular velocity of that winding down, both combined together is called the crunch factor, right? Okay, try one more time, slow motion, Doug. Go up there and stop right there. Yeah, so see that lateral flexion in his trunk, that's your lateral flexion and comb combination of that angular velocity, right? Those are called the crunch factor. Thanks, Doug. So this the combination of the amount of lateral flexion and the angular velocity is going to increase your uh, ball distance and also it's going to increase the club velocity at the impact of the ball so this this is very important for you again there's a lot of factors involved in this the lateral flexion and the angular velocity causes a lot of shear forces in your vertebrae and this is one of the common reason why golfers uh, go a lot of gets a lot of lower back pain so if you're not executing that properly it's going to create a lot of shearing forces and we call it the part called pars interarticularis. That's an area of your vertebrae between your two joint surfaces. The shearing forces go there up to, in golf, it goes up to 600 to 1200 newtons of shearing force goes in your vertebra when you do that. Uh, to affect that structure, you need anywhere between like 800 to 4000 newtons of pressure. So that's why a normal golfer would do up to about 100 swings in a golf game with this practice game and all the swings. So imagine the amount of shearing force going through your vertebrae when you do this kind of mechanisms. And that's why training to take care of all these factors, all these biomechanics is very important. Your X factor, crunch factor, and also your width and stability. So we're gonna talk about that later. Before going there, we're gonna watch the biomechanics of uh, our another wonderful patient, Claire here. And uh, she's gonna come and show her X factor, crunch factor, and the base of support, and we see how that's going. Hey, Claire. This is Claire. This is my wonderful patient again, and she's also a member in the Mayfair Royal Mayfair Club in Edmonton. And um, very thankful for them to show up at 7:30 in the morning to help me out for this show. And welcome, Claire. So for Claire, we're going to start first with that uh, setup. Can you show your setup, Claire? Okay. So if I have to compare Claire and Doug here. Um, Claire's, you watch the Claire's knee bending, it's not, um, she's not lowering a center of gravity as much as Doug did, okay? She's still keeping a center of gravity quite high. So, can you bend this knee a little bit? There you go. See, look at that. That's a little bit lowering of the center of gravity. She's going to get more stability if she lowers a little bit more for her height so that the center of gravity is really low so that the stable platform is there. Her base of width is pretty good. For her uh, physique, she's actually keeping a little wider base than what Doug did. That's okay, that's totally fine as long as she finds it stable and she finds it she's able to execute her shot properly, that's totally fine. But I just want to show you guys the difference between Doug's stance and uh, Claire's stance. So a little bit wider base of support and a little bit higher center of gravity. Maybe she's compensating the higher center of gravity by widening the base a little bit more, I don't know. But we'll see how she hits on that. Can you hit a ball for me Claire? Nice, good shot there. So now let's watch how um, Claire's X factor and the crunch factor is. Okay, Claire, take a backswing without the ball. Just take a backswing and stop at the top of the backswing for me. Yeah, stay right there. Good. So watch her separation angle between her pelvic girdle and the shoulder girdle here. And she has a decent amount of dissociation happening. The spine is going to a lot of torsion between her pelvic girdle and the shoulder girdle. A good torsion right here, the club is up here. So that is her X factor there. So we're going to let you swing your ball on that one. So watch her, appreciate her uh, X factor here. Nice, nice. Because uh, Claire is also my patient, I, I do see a bit of a thoracic spine, upper thoracic spine stiffness on the top upswing there. We'll talk about how to improve the more thoracic spine mobility to create a full upswing for you. Because the wider and the bigger the upswing is, the more angular velocity you're going to get for your shot. So that's why the thoracic spine rotation is very important for the golfers to get more angular velocity of the club. Okay, let's talk about how is um, Claire's crunch factor. Uh, okay, so can you show me your downswing nice and slow? Yeah, 
stop right there good so here you can appreciate her lateral flexion and also because she did it so you can see also see her angular velocity of the trunk coming in here okay let's do it one more time claire nice very good thank you claire okay so you can see you can appreciate the difference in biomechanics between doug and claire on those three factors okay and now we'll talk about the training how to improve these factors how to what are the four components of the golf operating system training only four things to be trained for any golfers in the world flexibility stability strength and power period so we cannot just talk about how to train for those as golfers and what are the common mistakes golfers do right they never train number one sometimes they train they train like a bodybuilders they don't train to play golf and um, they don't do any power training and some people they don't do any strength training and they don't do mobility training and they blame it on the clubs all the time most of the people they throw the clubs away because they always find a fault in the club and also there's no proper warm-ups so you have to address all these things to have a good training program for you addressing the flexibility stability and your strength and power so we'll uh, we'll discuss that with Doug and Claire we'll ask them how they train to improve their game okay so I'm gonna ask um, Claire now how's how she is training for to improve her golf performance and let's analyze that go ahead Claire how do you train I would say that um, first of all uh, before I play I warm up so I always take a few swings okay um, before I even do that I stretch a little bit at home okay um, and I would say I also do other activities so cross training so I do mm -hmm. some yoga wonderful and uh, of course, gardening is not very good for golf, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say additional activities that I do over and above golf to, to okay. build a little bit more strength. Good. So just to summarize what Claire said there is, she does some yoga, that's flexibility. She does some stretches, that's a little bit of a flexibility, but uh, mobility and stretching are a little different. We'll talk about that later. Stretching is mostly for your muscle flexibility, but mobility exercises are to move your joints differently in different range. Um, as golfers, I would rate mobility higher than the stretches, okay? So she's doing some stretching, she's doing yoga, she's also doing some CrossFit kind of a strength training. So I'm going to ask, what I feel it's missing here is, I'm going to ask uh, Claire if she's doing any stability and power training, okay? Are you doing any stability training, Claire? I would say that would be what's missing, is that I'm not doing enough strength training. Okay. Um, Weight-bearing training, okay. I think, is something that I... Uh, used to do before covid okay not because <laughs> but access to access to fitness clubs is of course a little, a little bit of a problem for now so that would be what is missing for me okay. um i do what i can if it's if it's planks and that sort of yeah. weight you yeah. know body weight bearing exercises okay okay good and um i'm talking about power training for power building are you doing any specific exercises claire power training yeah like things with kettleball or battle ropes or jumping and anything like that to build power uh, in your body. Not regularly, okay. I would say uh, maybe yeah. maybe once a week, but not regularly. Yeah. No. So if I have to develop a program for uh, golf performance for Claire, I would definitely add a bit of a stability training, a bit of mobility training for her thoracic spine and the power training. So those are the components I would add for Claire if I have to design a program for her to improve her golf operating system. Okay, thank you so much, Claire, for thank coming you. today and helping me today. Let's see, um, let's talk about uh, Doug's training program now. Okay, guys, we have Doug here. I'm going to talk to him about how he's training and preparing his body for his uh, golf performance, okay? Doug, go ahead. <laughs> what do you do? Well, as, as you know, Gary, I've had some problems with um, lower back spasms over there, and, yeah. and Gary's you know, given me a series of exercises to work through for training. So, so, you know, on a good week, I'll golf four times a week. Those days, I don't actually do um, uh, training. I'll do a, a warm up. We'll talk about in a minute. But, but on the other days, um, I have a, maybe an hour, an hour and fifty minute program where um, I'll, I'll start with some overall light body, medium light body weights, normal program of of uh, exercises then um, uh, I'll do some kind of combination balance weight things that you have given me uh, mm -hmm. taking some some weights on a uh, some from a kneeling position yeah. 
half kneeling uh, chops. Yeah, and then, then yeah. I'll take a 10 pound weight and I'll I'll do kind of a, a replication of sure. the some golf, power building golf, yeah. golf swing. Then I take some kettle balls and, and bell balls and and do walking kind of one side, yeah. the other side, walking Overhead, around and, yeah. and lifting them. What Doug is talking about here is kettlebell carries and lifts, uh, which I put him through from last year once his back has got better for the power training and the strength building, and uh, he's on it. Uh, and then uh, I usually finish with some um, some balance uh, exercise again, things mm -hmm. that you you have taught me, kind of working on on yeah. one leg in a very variety of positions. Wonderful movement off of uh, off of single uh, leg, yeah, si single leg, yeah. Yeah. What's Doug talking there about is a stability training I put him through. Um, he does quite a bit of stability training. Uh, we, in the clinic, we put him through some foot beam and Y balance and stuff like that. At home, he just does a um, lot of single leg activities to improve his stability in the hip knee ankle chain. So, and you know, um, this year, so far, fingers crossed, this is the first year that I yeah. can remember that I haven't yet had a back spasm. And That's had a great to, news. Had to yeah. come for emergency therapy. That's from, a great news. From you, Gary. So, yeah. fingers crossed, uh, yeah. but the combination of things, which is, I guess, really core strengthening yes. program that yes. you put me on, has made a difference. I'm so glad to hear that it helps. So, how do you warm up before the game? What do you sure. do? Um, well, I'll either do it at home or they have set up a, a place here for yeah. for warm ups. And the minimum takes me about 15 uh, minutes. So I'll start with some uh, uh, wall angels. Snow angels. Yes. That's your mobility Snow drill to get yeah. to get going. I'll do some some rotations, uh, rotations, and and some yeah kind of upper body and arm good uh, stretches. Um, then I uh, uh, I lie down on a. Uh, uh, yoga mat. I take the uh, the roller, the foam roller. I'm on yeah. my hands and knees, and I'm coming under. Wonderful. That's a thoracic over. rotation. He's talking about. Yeah, I can yeah. usually hear a crunch or two, a crack or two <laughs> in there, which yeah. is good. So I'll do a dozen of those. Yeah. Each um, each way, I go from that to kind of extending out on a ball and pushing it out. Yeah. Again, I'm on my hands and knees, um, and from that to some, you know, cat. Cow yeah. things to kind of get yeah. the spine. Yeah, lots of mobility and flexibility drills. That's spine really good. Moving right, and then I'll lie down from that to do a, a, a cobra, some extension. A yeah, move to, spinal to extension. Extend, good. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, then I will. Uh, actually, I usually pause there and I rotate my uh, my feet and extend my feet slowly to mm -hmm. get kind of uh, those things going. And then mm -hmm. I'm on my back. And uh, I start out with a series of kind of leg pulls and mm -hmm. twists, and mm -hmm. then the, the, you know, the, the yeah, the, the hip mobility stuff. All, trying yeah. to do that, get that moving, and then finally uh, I lie on my back and do a variety um, of uh, twists. Right. Okay. So I, so I go from those twists that I, I into upper body ones. Right. Okay. So, so I'm kind of coming over, right, and extending out. I usually finish by extending out for 10 or 15 okay. seconds on okay. on uh, each awesome. side. Like okay. so. Great, so Doug, Doug is mainly kind of uh, working on his mobility and flexibility drills as a warm-up before the game, which is a great thing because it's you don't want to be too tired before the game doing a lot of strengthening and power drills. It's a nice warm-up to have some flexibility, stability, mobility drills before uh, your game uh, to get you going for the game. And um, thank you so much, Doug, You're and uh, for well, helping you. me today. Yeah, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the training uh, later. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to talk about training. How to train properly to improve your uh, golf's performance and increasing some yards in your shots. So, you have to train movement patterns, not individual muscle groups. Uh, don't tell me that you're going to, oh, my glutes are weak, I'm going to just strengthen my glutes or my quads or things. Isolated strengthening doesn't work very well with the golf training because you, your muscles uh, work in groups. A movement patterns is what you're training. So how you train? You got to lift, pull, push, carry, single hand, double hand carry, bend, rotate, breathe, lunge and squat. So those are the things you need to train to improve your golf performance and along with those factors which you need to improve your um, golf operating system. We talked about the X factor, the crunch factors and the proper base of support with your feet, hip, knee, ankle stability. So if you want to get better at it, 
you have to do all these things uh, to work on your movement patterns. You have to lift, pull, push, carry, bend, rotate, squat, lunge and breathe. Breathing is very important. A lot of people don't breathe properly with your diaphragm. They are chest breathers. That affects your strength and power also. Okay. Now, so what are the four components, four components of golf um, operating system training? As I told you before, flexibility, stability, strength and power. So what can you do for flexibility? Flexibility, we're talking about everything from the top to bottom. Your neck mobility, how good his neck is moving and the extension rotation and how good your shoulder is moving and how are you dissociating your neck and shoulder movement because the neck and shoulder dissociation is very important for golf because you're fixing your head on the ball and then you're moving your shoulder, okay? Your shoulder girdle has to dissociate nicely with your neck. If that dissociation is not there, if you're very tight between your neck muscles to your shoulder blade and everything, that dissociation doesn't happen. And then your rotation, your X factor is going to be impacted. And also shoulder girdle, then the spinal mobility, especially thoracic spine. A lot of golfers, uh, white collar jobs, sitting on the desk or manager or CEOs or whatever it is, and then they don't move much throughout the day, then they just come to the golf course and then start working on it. The rotation is quite impacted, extension and rotation of the thoracic spine and your um, lower back spine. The hip, hip rotation, pelvic rotation, hip side to side movement, the lateral flexion, the rotation, that's very important. And also hip knee ankle mobility is very important. So flexibility, we are talking about head to toe, how good you should move and you have to train to improve the flexibility. Stretching is a little different than flexibility exercises. In flexibility and mobility exercises, you are moving the joints, okay? You're not focusing more on stretching the tight muscles. You're talking about more on uh, moving that stiff joints, okay? You can see in the slide there, there are some pictures I put it for that. The first one, the dog pose is really good. Um, the stretch for the thoracic spine and this and the rotation exercises. Even remember the Doug was talking about the rotation he is doing as a warm up. I put him that because the thoracic spine was stiff. And also you can see that extension of the thoracic spine and also using a foam roller to improve the extension of the thoracic spine. Some sample mobility exercises. I even put all the mobility exercises here because it, it's individualistic and also um, it depends on what are your needs are, where you're stuck or where you're not moving well. And also you can see some hip mobility exercises. We focus so much on the hip because um, the hip mobility is something it's really uh, affected in a lot of people. So if you haven't watched my previous episodes about uh, some thoracic mobility and hip mobility, please go and watch in um, Ask Giri Physio Show website, which is physioshow.ca. All our episodes are archived there. We already talked about some of the hip mobility exercises in that, in that one of the episode actually. Okay, now next one. <clears throat> this is a sample uh, flexibility slide is that to improve your uh, backswing, just standing there and how to move your arm and rotate and get that dissociation between your uh, pelvis and the shoulder. A simple drill which will help you to work on that dissociation. You can practice this uh, as a warm up also before your game. Now, stability training, what I mean by stability? Um, core stability, definitely you need very important because um, the optimal trunk uh, stabilization and the firing pattern happens when you're neutral spine and the big global muscles and also small muscles in the spine which you multifidus and they have to work very good for your good stability and the segmental stability also to prevent the compressive forces and the shearing forces going through your spine during your upswing and the downswing right so there's a lot of compression forces goes through your spine about six to eight um, eight percent more than your body mass like you know eight times uh, of your body mass that's amount of compression forces going through your spine when you're doing your uh, uh, downswing and backswing so good core stability kind of absorbs the shock better uh, instead of putting so much stress on your post intraarticularis, the bony structure and also your uh, disc your annulus fibrosis the fence of your disc right it's a too many compression and shearing forces can disintegrate the fence of your disc and sometimes you can have disc issues as well so um, that's why it's very important to have a good core stability program and also a dynamic stability of the legs or it's not just one joint your hip knee ankle feet or the foot the whole stability of the whole chain we need to work on a uh, lot of single leg activities a lot of dynamic stability activities to improve that uh, then comes your um, uh, because i'm also a neurological physical therapist um, there is uh, ndt is your neurodevelopmental therapy i put that basic uh, neurodevelopmental therapy patterns uh, into the golfers also because your backswing and your downswing and a lot of trunk rotations dissociation between shoulder and the pelvis with the spine in the middle and some people are really stiff and one of the best exercises you can do to improve that is rolling um, rolling from from on your tummy to all the way to the 
uh, on your back and on your, from your back all the way to your tummy. So there are ways to roll, there's a the right way to roll and the wrong way to roll and how you can improve uh, your rotations and also your dissociation and improve your backswing and the downswing with rolling is amazing. I work, I work with a lot of golfers um, and um, so we do rolling with them too to improve that part if they are missing in that part. So we apply the neurodevelopmental therapy techniques also into the stability training and mobility training. Then comes your, um, this is another picture slide you see that for the foundation of stability, you can see the feet position of that person and the feet has to be really stable for you to execute the whole uh, backswing and the downswing on a very stable platform, okay. So even if a little bit of a misalignment, malalignment, stability issues with your feet, you're going to have a trouble. Again, talking about feet. I have a great episode on feet in Ask Giri Physio Show uh, at physioshow.ca. Watch that feet episode and also talked about how to improve the mobility and stability of the feet because we do abuse our feet by wearing shoes and not using it properly uh, in our lifestyle patterns. So check out that episode so you can help with that as well. So and then the strength. So strength training, as I said, we're not strength training as a bodybuilder, we're strength training for golf execution, golf movement patterns, a golf operating system. So we train a lot of multiple kinetic chain, um, or kind of anterior kinetic chain or a front chain and the back chain or posterior chain, lateral chain, rotational chain. So different chain and kinematic chain we train as a movement patterns for the strength training. Not much of isolated strength training we do to improve your golf performance. So. Some of the sample exercises you see there, but there's a lot more to come for your kinematic chain strength training based on your um, uh, goal swings, right? Then these are the key components of your uh, essential components of your golf training. So uh, you see you need to have a good posture, good alignment, uh, good range of motion, good balance, good strength, good stability, and also a lot of functional movements. We talked about movement patterns, right? Push, pull, and pushing and pulling with retraction and protraction, lift, carry, bend, rotate, all those things has to be involved. Um, that's very, very important for you uh, to train in that way, right? If you do not have a training program, you please consult your physiotherapist who kind of treated golfers, who knows the golf biomechanics and then who can create a nice um, golf training program for you and identify all the dysfunctions in your body. It all starts with an assessment, right? So then a sample exercise, uh, I put in the slide there, um, a sample exercise section, just a pull day, how do you work on a pull day and how do you work on a push day? Uh, I put a bunch of things together and it's a great uh, journal article in um, Journal of Trinology. Uh, there's a great article uh, which uh, I reviewed, also extracted some information from that to help you guys with this. So just a sample for you guys in this slide, how a push day will, would look and how a pull day would look and using some dumbbells and body weight, some even tubing and terrain bands and medicine ball. Uh, medicine ball is a great um, uh, golfer's friend I would say because like the medicine ball slams on the wall like you know it's like you can mimic your golf swings on that. It's really good for the power generation and also working on slamming the ball on the wall and um, if you're practicing at home please get permission uh, from your wife to do that otherwise do it outside somewhere because you will be in trouble if you keep slamming that wall with a big medicine ball right. I, it's just from my personal experience. Um, so this is some example of push pull at training and then we are talking about power. This is this is a major missed component a lot of golfers when we talk to Doug and Claire and I also noticed they are doing some but um, uh, because I put uh, Doug through some of these things here but uh, uh, some more power training they can do. Uh, I just advise them to work on some box jumps, uh, some battle rope stuff and things like that. Some of the things you can easily keep it at home, battle rope and um, small stool uh, for box jumps and also kettlebell, you can easily train at home itself for power training or work with your personal trainer or in the gym. Uh, power training is very important for the explosiveness and to add more uh, distance to your ball and for your swing. So where do you start? First of all, get a proper functional golf assessment or golf operating system assessment from your physiotherapist, head to toe, analyze everything, what are the dysfunction, what are the things missing in your body, highly individualistic, then see um, how is your golf operating system, uh, how is your flexibility, stability, mobility, strength and power and then what's missing and develop a nice training program so you can have a nice schedule so you can work on it and then improve your golf performance, right. Again, this is not skill development, this is developing your body to execute the skill to improve your performance. Uh, for your skill development, your golf uh, trainers and pros will help you with that. Uh, that's not my cup of tea. My cup of tea is to train your body for the sport, 
right? So hopefully this was helpful for you. And if you're enjoying golf this summer and um, think through this and then see what is missing in your body and take some help to improve your performance. And if you have any friends or family members who do you think would benefit from this episode, please share this with them and uh, so that we all can enjoy and improve our performance. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next episode. Have a great summer. Have a great golf game. Bye.